Okay, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage here at Red Hat Summit, Boston, Massachusetts. Two days of wall to wall coverage, rounding down day one. I'm John Furrier, your host, Rob Stretcher, analyst here. Breaking it all down, we got two great guests talking about cloud and open ecosystems. Prabhat Karapana, who's a Senior Vice President of HCL Tech, the AWS Business Unit. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, great to see you. Colin Fisher with Red Hat, Senior Director, Worldwide Partner Ecosystem. Thanks for coming on. You're welcome, thank you. So, you guys together partnering, a lot of cloud deals going on, obviously cloud, great presence with, with, in AWS as well, you guys have a product there. What's the big cloud trend right now that you guys are seeing? What we're hearing on theCUBE is, there's a lot of right sizing, obviously there's a little bit of headwind on the cloud, public cloud side. Europe's looking good, it's <laughs> good to tennis at KubeCon. What's the major trends in cloud right now that you guys are seeing right now for customers? Is it a slowdown? Is it accelerating? What are some of the core things you're seeing? You want to take it? Yeah, so from a uh, market perspective, if you look at uh, where the clients are focusing on are hybrid and multi-cloud, right? So the hybrid and multi-cloud is definitely a big trend. That's one aspect of it. Second is towards uh, people are pushing more on hyper automation, AI and ML related aspects is another important trend. Third is edge computing. So, um, and another important aspect of, uh, you know, how do you look at, uh, uh, you know, computing aspects of the cloud is concerned. So, if you look at hybrid and multi-cloud, that's, that has become one of the key uh, conversation with the CIOs and CDIOs, which actually potentially utilizes um, your hybrid infrastructure and as well as public cloud uh, services, plus a multi-cloud strategy. And with partners like uh, you know, uh, Red Hat OpenShift, it becomes imminent for the client conversations in terms of positioning in a more cost-effective manner. So we see these three are key essential aspect of it uh, in terms of uh, a public cloud and as well as a private cloud partnership as we move forward. Talk about the relationship with Red Hat. History, what's the current status, what are you guys working on, what are some of the successes? Quick, give a quick uh, overview of the relationship. Awesome, I mean, we have, we have, we have got a long uh, you know, uh, history in terms of our partnership. Um, specifically from an HCL tech perspective, you see we are an ecosystem within HCL tech, which is like end-to-end -end stack managing the ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have an IBM and Red Hat ecosystem within the HCL tech. Obviously this partnership is uh, not that old enough, but the level of conversations we have been partnering and having are extensive. If you look at the financial services industry, healthcare segment, manufacturing, we have some key conversations going on on the ground wherever we are looking at a multi-cloud and, and hybrid cloud infrastructure uh, services. So there are some industry specific solutions that we are building as well as we move yeah. forward, which kind of addresses some of the concerns the client has got in those specific industries. Uh, so which is, which is the right combination in terms of uh, you know, positioning this uh, in front of the clients for us. Yeah, and th does it go beyond ROSA and you know, OpenShift on AWS? Or how, do, how does it really, how do you utilize Red Hat or work with Red Hat in that way? There are various aspects, right? So when a client look at, looks at um, you know, the combination of uh, an hyperscaler cloud provider and an OpenShift, uh, it definitely goes beyond the ROSA, right? It is one of the enabling factor which actually uh, clinches clients to actually enable and do drive those conversations internally. It is about the strategy that you're going to put in place and uh, uh, for the cl each of those clients as to what will work and what doesn't work. If you look at AI ML aspects of it, you know, there is a combination of OpenShift ROSA and you know, the elements that we use. And from an AWS pers perspective, if you look at the SageMaker, uh, uh, RaceMaker kind of aspects, you combine that for an mm -hmm. efficient uh, use in the market. Similarly, it is security, it is compliance, it is uh, data governance um, uh, aspects of it. We, we look at it more from a 360 degree yeah. point of view, rather than just looking at that as, uh, as a ROSA aspect alone. ROSA is definitely a channel of conversations that we do, but there are holistic uh, you know, elements that we discuss with our clients in terms of our partnership and what works better for the clients. Yeah, and uh, we, we've also had a lot of conversations, uh, Prabhakar, about CentOS migrations, right? Because you know that's one of the things that's due to happen. You know, you, there's a migration for customers who are looking at RHEL six to RHEL seven. CentOS migrations. You know, there's there's kind of the stars are aligning a little bit, and and you know, HCL in a great position to start helping customers with that. 
Uh, and then the SAP piece is very relevant actually yeah. in the cloud. Yeah. So we have lots of conversations around SAP. So. I got to ask, first of all, I love to hear what you guys are doing. You have your own stack, you got to build out your own middleware, I guess it's a bad word to say. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's software. And it, that's something that we call super cloud. We've been, Dave Vellante, I've been doing this for about, it was 2021 at reInvent. We saw that trend and I actually pressed Adam Selesky at AWS. Uh, prior to reInvent and wrote a story about it called Next Gen Cloud. Mm. He didn't like the word Next Gen Cloud, but I liked it. It sounded like stats, Next Gen Stats on TV. But the trend was is that people were building on top of AWS Correct. that didn't have to spend any CapEx Correct. and would get cloud-like capabilities. Okay, you could call that an ISV, but ecosystems were developing. Yeah. And so I was calling out the conversation to start saying, hey, if you have an ecosystem, are you really just an ISV? Are you selling a package? So this, this new trend of you get on top of AWS service on that public cloud and then give the customers a choice to connect fabric, whether it's like a data layer or some area that's differentiated to their company. Snowflake, for example, does yes. this. Databricks is doing this. They go multi-cloud. How do you guys see that? Because you, you're providing services to your customers. Cutter. What does that look like? Take us through that. Am I a little bit off? What do you, what do you, what's, your, what's your reaction? And then, how does that play out? Got to pick that? Well, okay, so, let me just take a step back, if you, if you like. Um, I think the conversation around uh, what's happening with the hyperscalers is very relevant in the marketplace. Truthfully, they're becoming you know, more and more powerful. Uh, they have more and more reach into the market. Uh, but, but I think the important part here is, how do hyperscalers leverage the ecosystems? You know, because it's important for, for Red Hat as a, as a hyperscaler partner, yeah. but also HCL and, and many other partners, to be honest, to be able to leverage those platforms, leverage those footprints, um, because, you know, not everybody's in the, in the, in the market for, for plumbing their own infrastructure to, yeah. you know, to take a quote that everybody uses. But then it's then about how do you then add the, val the value add on top? And actually, if you're a partner today and you're, and you're just reselling the platforms, truthfully, that's a pretty tough existence. It's about the value add that you add on top. It's about the services that you can add on top of those layers. And we have many partners today that are adding that incremental value on top of the AWS and also the Red Hat platforms as well. So, and I know our friends at HCL are doing that as well. So. Yeah, and that's where the value is. That's yeah, where the, absolutely. I won't say customization, but the value creation is Come leveraging on. the cloud scale now Amazon, they, they compete with other clouds, so they're not going to be endorsing multi-cloud, but they, they want to, and Andy, I pressed Andy Jassy on this before he, he went, took the CEO job, and he said, look, we wouldn't want to be the best cloud, so competition's healthy in the cloud players, mm. but customers will want to stitch stuff together. No, absolutely, I mean, if you look at, see, the, the role of system integrator and a cloud provider and partners is very, very important in the current setup, right? So, yeah. uh, each, provider brings its own strengths and weaknesses in terms of where we need to head. Where the system integrator role starts and expands is in terms of identifying the gap that the client has, be it an industry, be it a solution, be it a framework, and build on top, the, top of that those services, bring in the right partners together and provide a holistic solution. That's the strategy that yeah. you need to put in place uh, from an organizational uh, success point. And that's where AI is fueling the apps and apps. lower ends of the stack. We've been talking about this yes. for weeks. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> I, I think what's interesting, and in, in I think when you look at what customers are asking, how important is Red Hat being open source to your customers? And how, how important is, how often does that come up as a reason uh, for them going this direction? Uh, let me take that, uh, because he's anyway a part of Red Hat, so, <laughs> yeah. so I'm biased. Yeah, I, know, I, know, I, I know what he's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's yeah, going to say, right? So yeah. let me take he's a He's not going to say no. <laughs> I mean, it's quite important. Just in, in general, we ask. Every client has now, yeah. if you look at 60, 70% of the client has chosen more than one cloud, cloud provider. Yeah. See, what happens is when you have a multi-cloud strategy, it becomes eminent in terms of having the right open shift level of conversations within the landscape because you're not vendor locking in. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have your, your ease at uh, exploring the, the best features of the, both the cloud strategies or a multi-cloud element. You're looking more from a cost efficient uh, perspective mm -hmm. and bringing the right level of skills and capabilities into the setup. 
So from a client perspective, I think it is, it, it is more of a system integrator as well to explain the pros and cons of having a, a cloud versus a multi-cloud and as well as uh, you know, combining with the OpenShift conversations. Uh, it's more about articulating, that's where the role of uh, you know, HCL Tech comes in. Uh, if you look at, we have a strategy called Cloud Smart, where we position and go with a strategic vision for each of those clients. Every client is different, every client need is different. So we construct and build a story for each of that client, bringing in the right strategy, right element, right operating model, underpinned by the security risk governance, and combining this with the hyperscaler like AWS and the Red Hat OpenShift, and then provide that value added framework for the client. So that's very important as a system integrator. And we more often we see clients liking that because you're making it much more yeah. transparent conversations to the client and making it much more viable for the client as to giving those uh, pros and cons of having the right architecture in place. And I, I, I strongly believe that that's the right model to go ahead. Yeah. And uh, you know, we see more and more clients adopting. Well, uh, I think that's, that's a great. I think that's a great point. If you go back to the history of OpenShift, remember there was a point where they were kind of in a toy, open state from the OpenStack side, and then mm. and then they had they were staring down the barrel of Kubernetes just hitting the scene. And Red Hat did a great job. I'm mean, talking to Paul Comrie about this. They completely shifted and went all in on hybrid. And I think that was such a smart move. But if you're talking about edge on premises and cloud working together and you're stitching things together, that's distributed computing. You need to have a common operating layer Absolutely. that's got, Absolutely. got to be consistent. Absolutely. Called Cloud Smart, good name. It's a smart play, it's an architectural thing, Correct. as well as it is practical. Absolutely. What's your reaction to that? Well, well and, and so, actually I, I agree, 110%, but, but I think actually when you start to look at edge and AI and all the different technologies that are coming to the forefront now, you know, that smart cloud, that, yeah. that homogenous, you know, platform right across those different environments is critically important moving forward, right? In fact, you know, how are you going to do what you want to do if, if you don't have that ability, you know, to manage across those hybrid Do you think multi -cloud it's multi-cloud or multi-environment? Uh, is there a distinction? It's a little nuanced question, but <laughs> I mean, Azure's Azure, they got their stack, I get, yeah. that, I get that, but like, Edge is a different animal, but is it stack dependent? What do you, how do you tease that out? I, I, we sometimes call it multi-environment. Yeah. Edge, premise, cloud, that's cloud operations. Now you got different stacks. How do you guys look at that? What do we, well, I, I to clear know. up the confusion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, we, we look at it as, uh, today at Red Hat, we look at that as multi-cloud, right? Um, you know, I guess, you, I guess you could say it's about terminology and, and nuances, but actually when we look at it, we look at it from a, a multi-client perspective. You know, we, are, we are an organization that, that pride ourselves on having that multi-client footprint, so that, you know, that it, it kind of gives customers the flexibility, the choice, and, and all the usual stuff okay. that you've heard time and time again. But actually, that, that is real value to our customers. Right? That's what our customers yeah. are asking for today. That's allowing customers to take the technology, distribute it, use it where they want to use it. But more importantly as well, when you start to then wrap around some of the buying programs that we've, mm -hmm. we've brought into the organization recently, it's giving customers real flexibility and choice and, and then how they start to get better economies of scale or you know, dr driving better yeah. kind of you know, margins, if you like, out of their cloud footprints and, and yeah. that's what Where do you think about that? Go. What's your take? Um, I, I mean, I agree with uh, Colin, uh, but in terms of the multi-cloud and multi-environment, uh, in a cloud you can have a multiple environment setup as well. See, yeah. each of those, uh, every cloud, the cloud is a strategy. Multi-cloud is a you know a, a couple of clouds, okay, multiple clouds. But the environment could be complex. Environment could have a multiple environments as well. For example, um, if you look at from an IoT perspective, IoT devices are one set of segments. If you look at from a smart city perspective, yeah. right? If you look at uh, manufacturing industry, there are various other aspects which needs to be connected uh, to uh, to the system. So each of this environment changes from time to time, right? So there will be a complex multi-environment system for a multi-cloud uh, you know, conversations. It is more about bringing the, the right elements and ingredients onto the table to, to make sure you create a holistic environment and strategy which works for the client. Right. I, I think what's interesting is you both have kind of mentioned it a couple times around AI. Yeah. And I, I think that when some of the conversations we've been having at, at the last couple shows is that there is a real sustainability 
kind of issue with generative AI and potentially, you know, that's solved by smaller models or inference or what have you longer term, but how are you counseling customers to look at cloud, look at AI? Because to me, it, it, it can't all be in the cloud because A, there won't be enough GPUs, you won't be able to cost effectively use to really train your models long term. Uh, how, what are you seeing from your customers right so, now in that? I mean, the AI has been the talk of the town in recent <laughs> times, right? So everybody is talking about AI. You know, Google, Microsoft, everybody, AWS. Micro, people's everybody, grandmothers right, are so, talking about yeah, AI. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's magic. So it, it, it's, it's something. So, but from a client perspective, what matters is, um, you know, I'm talking about a recent experience with the CIO. He said. Uh, I, you know, I, it doesn't matter whether it, whether it is AI or ML or any other aspect, but what is very much important for me is an hyper automation. I'm looking at an automation. So every client has a different perspective of looking at it, yeah. right? So uh, some clients look at more from a cost efficiency perspective consolidation. Yeah. Some uh, healthcare clients look at more from a uh, AI modeling perspective. The task can be done in a multi-model uh, you know, way. Today, Matt session in the keynote, he, he spoke about Red Hat OpenShift AI, which is an, they have another ama okay. amazing dimension, you know, which is going to be the, built on the OpenShift, which is to be launched. I mean, that's an amazing feature. So it's more about uh, uh, creating the right environment for that specific client to build that specific AI model. I mean, there are costs yeah. associated, associated with it, but it's more about as we get mature, I think things will also yeah. get matured on the AI domain is what we strongly believe. Prabhaka, thank you guys so much for coming on. We'll give you the last words, both of you, to share this wave that we're on. And, and it, we all believe, I mean, I mean, I believe that this AI is going to be one of the big three inflection points. Matt kind of threw in the iPhone in there, but I think iPhone came out of the web, and I think cloud came out of the web SaaS market, but PC, web, AI, if this is truly the next wave, the companies that lean into it and take advantage of it are ready. They got to be data ready, they got to be AI ready with the mindset. The ones the that aren't are going to get, get washed well. away, right? Okay. So they'll, they'll be losers and winners and losers. What's your advice to the companies out there who are, who are obviously it's in their face, yeah, it's hyped up, but there is an element of refactor and don't let someone come in and eat your lunch. Correct. And the ones that do it right will win. What's your, what's your vision and advice See, to folks my to- advice, My advice or uh, two cents on this is, uh, you need to be prepared, right? Technology keeps changing. AI is today, we are talking about AI. But you need to look at from each of your domain and industry perspective what works for you. In some industry cases, some people will think, okay, I, I would wait for some time to get adopted. Let that uh, technology get matured for me to adopt. There are some startups who are actually latching onto it in terms of creating their own a marketable model. So it, it depends upon okay. the type of company you work for. But this is a space to watch, uh, build your skills around it, understand yeah. what's happening on that uh, perspective so that you are well positioned to adopt at the right time. Yeah, I interviewed Swami when they announced the Hugging Face uh, expanded relationship. That was, I think, a, a couple weeks before they did the big generative AI launch um, as a response to, to the uh, other cloud and um, open AI, and, it, and it's interesting, now they're all in. Adam Selesky, the whole team, yep. partner network, all yep. plugging Gen AI, because that's where the action is. And developers are submitting papers, and you're seeing more intellectual, real meat on the bone work. Not just hype, but like startups are working on it, people are jamming hard on it. Absolutely. Solving these hard problems now with AI to assist the human. Yeah, absolutely, and, and truthfully, I don't think it's going to slow down. We all know that yeah. that's the way the marketplace is going. It, it reminds me a little bit of virtualization and, and where we were with cloud kind of, you know, seven or eight years ago. That, that mass is yeah. starting to happen. The wave is really picking up. And we all know, of course, once organized that customers go and, and, and are interested, organizations then push their, their money and their research into it. And of course, yeah. it, it then snowballs. But uh, I think one of the things that we all need to think about as well is the data sovereignty piece with, with AI, yeah. and I think that's going to become very important yeah. as we move forward, right? given as well some of the geopolitical considerations yeah. that we've had recently. Yeah. So again, AI, great technology, <laughs> but we all just need to, you know, Dave think Vellante's, about the data Dave Vellante's interviewing Michael Dell today, I just saw the interview, mm. and Michael Dell was an interesting, he started his company in dorm room when he was 19. He was doing mail order PCs, remember mail was the, was the technology for shipping stuff. Yeah. So he jumps on the web, 
does build to order, manages supply chain. Dell Computer rode that wave, although he was an incum somewhat incumbent, but he was an upstart. All direct mail's gone, now you got the web. So the, you know, these are the things that are going to happen. Right. Absolutely. And companies are smart, CEOs are saying, whoa, who do we call? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> we What's call your, our friends what, at HCO. What would you say to that CEO? Say, hey, I need help, what's the pitch? On the AI? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's more about uh, you know, um, context, right? So what context the client is looking at and what uh, problem the client is trying to resolve, right? So I mean, you know, from a system integrator perspective, it's all the skill set that we need to be ready. So we are ready in terms of addressing some of those uh, you know, concerns for various clients. So as we build the capability, as the technology gets even more mature, I think more and more those demands yeah. will come where we need to address them accordingly. Yeah. So we are well positioned in that yeah. way with our uh, cloud mass strategy and as well as the investments that we are currently making in this technology internally as well, yeah. will uh, definitely ensure um, our, our skills and capabilities are yeah. rightly positioned for each of those clients. And HCL has a cloud, which is great. You got a stack, adding value. Guys, thanks for coming on, Colin. You're very Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Thanks, for Thanks a lot. All right, day one, we got one more interview, then we're going to do the wrap up. Two days wall to wall cover. Go to siliconangle.com, check out the stories that are hitting, of course, day right here. We have a great panel coming up next. We'll be right back.